welcome everybody. Hi, uh, hi Jim. Hi Mason. Hi Ken. Hi everyone. To uh, uh, that um, sent a message in there. Um, and uh, uh, first, just to start with an introduction to myself. Um, first, uh, I'm Kyle Flynn. I work with uh, uh, Voices, obviously, as the Platinum Account Manager for all of the Platinum talent on our uh, site there, as well as with all the amazing coaches that we partner with, um, just like Gary here. Uh, so before I hand it over to Gary, Gary, looks like we've already got a question there from Gene. Um, what beauty microphone is that? <laughs> Uh, well, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, it's it's a, a very cheap and cheerful, actually, MXL Tempo, which is, a, I, I suppose, a sort of podcasting mic. Um, I have got voiceover work with this, but um, <laughs> it's a plug and play. MXL is, uh, for those who don't know, is the same company that uh, produces martial amps. You know, if you go okay. to see a concert, you've got martial amps. Uh, yeah. MXL is kind of their microphone division. And um, it's an MXL tempo. It's it's really cheap and cheerful. But it, does it sound all right? <laughs> Maybe people are going, yeah, it sounds, it sounds, sounds all right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but it's, I, it's, I, I've had it a long time, maybe nearly 10 years. And um, it's great. It does the job. Uh, for particularly for Zoom stuff, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't really use it for voiceovers particularly. Yeah. Um, if you're starting out, you may get away with it if you've got some good sound deadening and so on. It's mm -hmm. not the first, you know, I think you need to spend a little bit more, but um, it'll get you started and great for Zoom and webinars and things like that. So. Perfect, perfect. Great for this type of experience. Awesome. Okay. Well, uh, with that being said, I'll uh, go ahead. I'll let you introduce yourself there, Gary. I'll also start uh, sharing the uh, presentation there that we've got today, and uh, we'll get started. So uh, go ahead, Gary, and, and give a brief introduction to yourself. Okay, well, uh, welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Gary, and um, I'm a, a British voiceover coach. You can probably tell by my accent, those of you who aren't in the UK. And um, I've been coaching for about... 16 years or so, uh, but I've actually been in the industry since um, the early 80s, so 1980s. And I started as a uh, as a uh, voiceover announcer for my uh, local station up in in the Midlands here in in Britain, or the, mid the middle of England, really in Birmingham. Um, and then I moved on, did uh, some stuff on camera uh when i had a bit more hair and uh, <laughs> i was a bit younger uh but also did voiceover as well mm -hmm. and i also went on to uh do some kids tv for a while did a little bit of that and then i was replaced by a puppet so i think that was someone <laughs> telling me I, it's about time you just did voiceovers and stayed off camera so um <laughs> I then went into radio, interestingly. I'd, I'd done a little bit of radio beforehand, but did some radio uh, full-time uh, in my home city of, of Nottingham, uh, famous for Robin Hood, of course. And yeah. then I uh, went to a channel called Channel 4, which is a network channel here in the UK, uh, and is, is uh, quite well regarded. And I was, um, I was an announcer there and voiceover there for the best part of 24 years, really. So... Uh, and, and built up my, my voiceover career then. And then 2005, I started uh, started as a as a uh, voiceover coach, um, doing that alongside my other staff. And then that kind of took off and started teaching more and more people and doing it uh, full time, really, which is which is which is what I do. Um, and what we're going to do today is uh, a subject called vocalizing VO scripts, and it's one of those things that that comes up a lot. Uh, vocalizing what what does it mean uh, by vocalizing a, a, a VO script and sometimes you might even get a client that says um, can you vocalize this a little bit better particularly if they're, they're a bit switched on so what do we mean by that well I think we're, we're talking about really bringing words to life we're talking about owning words which is what you do as a as a voiceover artist you take those words and you get them off the page and they sound totally credible and sincere to your listener. And it doesn't matter whether you're doing uh, uh, whether you're doing a commercial, whether you're telling a story, 
uh, whether you are um, just just talking to someone or informing them and asking them to do something. At the end of the day, you are vocalizing it and you're getting those words off the page. So that's that's really in its kind of simplest form. That's what you do. So um, if we just move on to the, the next slide. So I've got um, there we go. So, so just kind of highlighting that that's what we're doing. We're bringing the words to life. It's what, what it what it means, really. Um, and everyone goes, oh, I know that's that's what we should be doing as, as voiceover artists. But you'll be amazed at the number of people who don't do that or think they're doing that. But actually, at the end of the day, it sounds like just like they're, they're reading the script or whatever, um, or it doesn't come across. So there are various things you can you can use and various little techniques and elements and things like that. So if we just move on to how do we do it? So um, this is a big question, really. I think, firstly, the main thing you've got to do is own those words. And by that, I mean making them yours. Now, obviously, the words on the page aren't your words. When you, uh, when you get a script, you just get a piece of paper or it's online or whatever, and you see on the screen all these words. But you've got to make that mental leap. And there's no kind of easy way to do that. It's just sort of saying, right, I'm going to make this mental kind of jump and go, right, for this 30 seconds or half an hour or three hours, however long the piece is, these are my words. And it's, if you think about it, in acting, if you're doing character voices, you will be ab sort of totally absorbed in that character, wouldn't you? You would become someone from a Shakespearean play or a soap opera or a movie or theatre character, whatever it is. You would totally become that person. Now, in mainstream voiceovers, if you're not doing um, here, I'm leaving aside sort of character voices and so on. But if you're doing mainstream voiceovers, you are basically you, but you with somebody else's words. So you're owning those words like an actor would. You're making them yours, but you're saying it as you. So that's kind of the tricky bit. And it, it's all done in the mind. And sometimes you might even have seen this before, but sometimes people describe voiceovers as the theater of the mind because that's where it's all done that's where the magic happens so it doesn't the magic doesn't happen in your throat or in your diaphragm although you know there are techniques and so on for that but it doesn't really happen there it, it all happens up here in your in your brain because that's where the sound will originate and then it's the difficult part is connecting your brain to your mouth Let's move my mic slightly further round so you can hear me. So it's about believing. So you've got to believe in what you say, totally 100%. As soon as you start slightly disbelieving what you're saying, your audience will pick that up. They'll hear it. They'll hear it. It's almost like a hole in the script. They'll go, oh, he's reading that. She's reading that. Or I don't quite believe it. Um, and that, of course, is terrible because you your role is to make these words that aren't yours is to make them totally believable uh, and make sure that that you do that so again it's all done in the mind you've got to believe in them for that 30 seconds you've got almost almost yourself suspend disbelief and say right these are my words i totally believe it and once you immerse yourself in that then you're, you're doing a good job and you're halfway there so you've got to say it like you mean it, really. It's all about getting that uh, getting that meaning across and saying it like, like you totally know what you're on about, even if you don't. And of course, often you get scripts where um, you, you think, well, I can't make head nor tail of this. I don't know what it's about, <laughs> particularly technical scripts and so on. But you've got to still do it as if you, you know what you're on about. Um, otherwise, you'll be found out as a fraud. <laughs> People will just know that oh, he's not he's not doing it properly or she's not doing it properly. So say it like you mean it. So if we just move on to the elements, uh, which is the next one. So um, a couple of sort of, well, three actually areas I think you can you can work on to really help add some richness to to your reading and your delivery. One is pace. And I think 
often people forget that we don't talk at the same pace all the time. In normal conversation, we have different speeds. So if you're meeting a friend for a coffee, you might say, hi, hello, how are you today? Yeah. Uh, and then you might suddenly speed up. Oh, you never guess what happened to me. Yeah, she came around the corner. And, you know, and then you get excited and you speed that up. And then it might slip down again. Then you might get a mid pace. But often I've, I've noticed this with a lot of people who are starting out in voiceovers, particularly they'll send me demos and things and I'll take a listen. And everything will be delivered at the same pace. So everything is, although the tones may be different, the pitch may be different, the material may be different, the tempo is the same. So altering the speed, and I don't mean kind of doing it falsely, it's got to be, it's got to feel natural, but bearing in mind that in real conversation, some things are quicker, some things are slightly slower, some things will be mid-paced. Just always keep that on board. Um, emphasis. Now, that, this is important too. So sometimes with a script, you will receive a, a very good script whereby the copywriter or the client has actually put certain words in bold or italics or they've underlined them and so on. And you think, ah, right, yeah, they want me to emphasize that word and that phrase, but not that one. Yeah, I can quite clearly say that, uh, see that. But in fact, with a lot of scripts, and you may have found this coming through from your potential clients, you may have seen with the audition scripts, you may have thought, well, hang on a minute, there's nothing there. They've given me a vague kind of brief that this is how I want it to be read. But in terms of the actual nitty gritty of the, um, the lines themselves, um, or the phrases and, and the words themselves, nothing is emphasized as in uh, visually for you. So in which case you've got to take the key words from the script. So go through the script, look at words you think might be important ones. So typical example, for example, in a, in a commercial, buy now, the calls to action. Uh, go to our website. It's free. You know, click on this now. Those things are to be emphasized and they kind of leap out at you. Also words like unique, you know, that would be one that you'd think, ah, Right, it's a unique service, or it's a unique, um, a unique sales proposition, or it's a unique um, product, and so on. So, getting the keywords yourself is really important, and again, it will help you own those words. Harking back to what we were saying earlier, so emphasis. Bear that in mind. Look, look, look out for your keywords and volume. Again, something we don't talk at the same volume all the time. We some things are very loud, and then we go quite soft, and then we go loud, and then soft, and then something is somewhere in the middle. Now, I'm not saying get a script and just sort of uh, just start saying thank you for calling, and I'd just like to tell you press two now, and then press three, <laughs> and then press four now. <laughs> you know, it's not it's not a kind of um, a false thing, it needs to be done very naturally. But just be aware that not everything in life and conversation and certainly in voice service is delivered at the same pace. So, uh, sorry, the same volume. So, you know, a little bit of amplitude here and there will, will work or softer, going softer and so on. Again, we'll give a different, um, a different feel and a different tone to what you're doing. Okay, so just moving on to, I think, our uh, our final point, and if, if there's only one takeaway from today, uh, hopefully there'll be lots, but if there's only one, I'd like you to remember that voiceovers at the end of the day are about talking, but not about reading. So it's you talking to your listener. And if as soon as you start reading, as I mentioned earlier, you will start to lose that audience and they'll start to just listen to your reading, not to the message. And it's the message that's the most important thing. And your listener, that's equally important. So you're talking to your listener. And if you can always think of that one person, it really helps uh, to just direct it. But at the end of the day, it's talking, not reading. All right. So I think we're going to have a, a bit of a, a practice now uh, with some talents who are putting themselves forward, those brave souls. I think we've got. Um, <laughs> we do indeed. We have uh, three. David, is it? Here today, uh, yes, David, uh, as well as Mason, as well as uh, Christian there. 
So uh, let me just see is David. There we go. David, I hope you're ready. Um, and I appreciate your bravery of coming on live. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and uh, promote you there. Um, so that way you'll be able to, uh, uh, to share your video or your microphone, um, however you wish, please. But uh, we'll start with uh, David Holmes there, everybody. There oh, we go. David, hello. Can you hear me now? <laughs> I can see you. Oh, excellent. Even better. Well, maybe not. Um, yes, and not a million miles from Nottingham, in fact. Um, oh, brilliant, brilliant. No, in fact, I was there last week for a dinosaur exhibition. It was very nice. Oh, do it. Right, okay. And that's not what we're talking about. Well, no, and I, I'm not in Nottingham now. That's kind of my origin, really, ah. um, where I'm from. But um, I'm just north of London now. But um, uh, glad you were. Whereabouts are you, David? Obviously, you're I'm in the Midlands. States. I'm in a tiny village near Market Harbour. Oh, right. And so you're in the East Midlands then. Very, gotcha. very rainy right now. So, David, just give us all a bit of an idea about yourself. You seem to have a good, from what I can tell you, gear looks pretty impressive there. Oh, There's yeah. a nice setup going on. <laughs> what, um, what, what's, your, what's your story? What's your backstory? Uh, my backstory is that I kind of started doing a couple of bits and pieces for people um, in, while I was still in my previous career, which was a theatre lighting designer. And I was freelance doing that for 20 odd years and I started doing a bit this piece of that and then I had to stop theater for health reasons did um, some uh, voluntary bits and then decided that actually with um, it, it, it's it wasn't feasible to go to do production periods at different theaters around the country around the uh, around Europe because uh, of the children and um, uh, school times and uh, and whatnot. And so I decided to give this a bit of a go. And then shortly afterwards, um, a few months afterwards, it was pandemic time and a lot of people went on Amazon and ordered a microphone. And we've been, sw I've been swimming a little bit since. It is now starting to pick back up again a little bit, which is great. But I have been told categorically by a number of people, including my coach and um evan at voices in fact um that uh owning the words is the biggest issue is the kind of getting rid of the sound of the reed um is is tricky uh, is is holding me back a bit okay that's good and what about your uh, equipment just um take us through what have you got there? oh i'm sorry is that what you meant no <laughs> no no, no you've <laughs> the, story, the, the, the backstory was great as well what I have here is I have a Rode NT1 because I, I've tried a few things and I love this one. Yeah. Um, and I have a Focusrite Claret 2 Pre. Scarlet. Yep. Yep. Um, Very good. And uh, lots of nice acoustic tiles by the looks. Well, there's acoustic tiles. That's actually kind of an arrangement. That I, I mean, I, I can't actually see my camera at the moment, but <laughs> these curtains. Oh, we can see you. So it's a... These curtains move around. And there's right, a big panel right. on the far wall that folds out and the curtains surround it. It's been a long process of testing and trying and changing. <laughs> yes. uh, but we're get, we're there now, finally, I, I think. I think. I, I think you make a very good point there, that it, at the end of the day, it's all about trial and error in acoustics and re uh, sound recording, isn't it? Because you can think you've got a, a nice deadened room and then when you listen back, it... it you get lots of room echo. Uh, well, this is the thing. I thought everything was absolutely perfect before I'd done a few kind of remote recordings. Everything was fine. And then I started doing things that had to be quite uh, demonstrative and uh, assertive and loud and confident. And the, the, then, of course, all the the bounce was back because there was much more sound. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so we had to uh, take everything down and start again. I can't hear a... David, I can't hear a uh, an East Midlands accent going on. No, there. you can hear a... Some people say strong, some people say not. Um, a Scottish accent from. I was going to say there's Lanarch. something there's something Celtic. There's in a the background. There's there. a hint. There's a hint of Celtic earth yes. there. Yeah, yeah, yes. that's very nice, lovely. Mm. Sounds great. Okay, so you could tell you, people um, that that would be great. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look at uh, this script. I think uh, here we go. It's called Hard Sell. It's always <clears> a <throat> shock when you see that. Now yeah. to. To be fair, I think a lot of hard sell is in the area of uh, what are sometimes called yell and go. Right. Which is, Prices are down, down, down. Yes, it sparks electrical. That kind of thing. Um, sale now on. 
Um, and they're sometimes called screamers. And all you do is kind of go, <laughs> and get, mm -hmm. hopefully start at the beginning and get to the end all right. Um, this one is in the category of sort of hard sell, but it's not it's not a shouty one. Um, it's it's got a little bit a little bit more nuance, I think. Okay. Um, whenever you make it a chart bus tonight, you never need a babysitter. The parking is always free. The atmosphere is as casual as the dress code, and you always get the best seat in the house. So remember, when it comes to a great night out, just stay in. Stream your movies from the world's number one chart buster because there's no place like home. A bit of a naff line at the end there. <laughs> which Lovely. Is Lovely. <laughs> so, um, David, I'm, I think with this, if you just um, take us through it. So if you want to give us a read, we'll, we might do it. So the kind of pacing something. that you were doing there, is that the kind of timing you're after? It's not a kind of sultry sell for a night in. It's, I, mean, it's... I mean, it's one of those things that it could be interpreted lots of different ways, couldn't it? Sure. So you could get a client who would say, please, can you make this? Whatever you make it a chart bus tonight, <laughs> you never need a babysitter. The parking yeah. is all. You could have it like that, but we're saying it's oh, difficult no, to make this, parking this sexy, though, one. isn't it? We've got one of those coming up hopefully later on. Um, <laughs> but with this one, definitely, I think it's uh, it's got a bit of bit of oomph to it, bit of pace to it. So we, okay, we, so I'm going to try and make it my own. I'm going to. Uh, I'm yeah, a absolutely. I'm a father. I'm the amount the fact the idea of children being in bed before midnight is amazing to me. So I, I, <laughs> it's, it's sort of such a lovely idea. <laughs> Whenever you make it a chart, oh, ready? No, you go for it. Whenever you make it a chart buster night, you never need a babysitter. The parking is always free. The atmosphere is as casual as the dress code, and you always get the best seat. Sorry, I should have been faster. Atmosphere is as casual as the de dress code, and you always get the best seat in the house. So remember, when it comes to a great night out, just stay in. Stream your movies from the world's number one chart buster because there's no place like home. <laughs> home. Lo it is now. <laughs> lovely, lovely and friendly. I'm a very friendly voice there. Um, and uh, it's, it's, dull, it's always though. harder. I think it's always harder on, on things like this on a Zoom or a w webinar mm. or whatever when you're doing it in front of 500 people on voices. You know? <laughs> That's very yeah. different to just doing it in your own studio where there's only you, you know, maybe yeah. your partner out the back. Hopefully making you a nice cup of tea for after you've done it. But but on your own doing it is always tough. Um, I thought it was great. I thought it was really friendly, which I like. Um, it needs more pace, though. Okay, right. So when you were doing it. Whenever you make it a chart buster night, you never need a babysitter. But I was going, whenever you make it a chart buster night, you never need a babysitter. The parking is always free, blah, blah, blah. So I had a bit more, bit more speed there. All right. So just have a, yeah. Have a Red Bull or something, and uh, okay. virtual gonna, Red Bull. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to sit forward in my chair. Okay, do a little bit of a tiger dance, and then <clears throat> whenever you make it a chart bus tonight, you need never, you never need a babysitter. The parking is always free. The atmosphere is as casual as the dress code, and you always get the best seat in the house. <clears throat> So remember, when it comes to a great night out, just stay in. Stream your movies from the world's number one chart buster, because there's no place like home. Very good. That's coming together, actually. That was much, much better. Uh, could you feel it yourself, just that extra bit of pace? Uh, I, I liked the energy of it. It's, it's, it feels stilted. It feels r r like I'm reading to me, but yeah, because I, I am. I think it's also, but... it's also worth pointing out that energy and speed are two different elements in voiceovers. So you can be quite energetic, but quite slow. So you could right. have gone, whenever you make it a chart bus tonight, you never need a babysitter. The parking sure. is always free. The atmosphere, harking back really to how you did it a little bit at the beginning, where you sort of had the energy, but not the speed. Okay. And likewise, you could be very fast, but have no energy there. You know, you could, have, whenever you make it a chart bus tonight, you never need a babysitter. The parking is always free. The atmosphere Let's the just is gabbled and ridiculous. Very good. Um, but always remember that. So sometimes you may get a client saying, can I have more energy, but not more speed? So uh -huh. they're sort of, sometimes they're interdependent and sometimes they're separate. Sure. Uh, so just bear that in mind. But okay, fantastic. thank you. No, you but did, very, very, really very, well, very briefly, just yes. because of, or, or based on what you were saying before, the uh, emphasis 
words here. Yeah. Should we? Uh, do you want to just point out a couple that might that might be screaming to you that aren't to me? I mean, I think the, the never probably no. uh, if I was interpreting this and we didn't have the clients pointers uh, to mm. go on, I think definitely Chartbuster. Make mm -hmm. it a Chartbuster night because Chartbuster is the name of the company, sure. isn't it? We and presumably it's kind of a poor man's Netflix, from what I gather. Um, so that's that. That would be the thing. Okay. I mean, if, if, um, just looking. Whenever you make it a Chartbuster night, you never need a babysitter. I mean, never there. You yeah. never need a babysitter. The parking Park is, is always, always free. free. The atmosphere, but you wouldn't want to overemphasize anything. I mean, like you can't always. The parking is always free because, of course, we're saying it as part of a, a silly thing, aren't we? We're not saying the parking yes, is free. Yes, absolutely. It is free, and you can't you emphasize know, everything. Outside my house or whatever. <laughs> the world, I mean, the world's number one. You'd probably want to say that. Stream your movies from the world's number one. Every All right. Says that, All right. One more go. <laughs> We've got time for one more go. Uh, Kyle, have we got one? We've yep, got time one for more? one more read. Yeah, go on. Right. Give it a shot. <clears throat> Whenever you make it a chart buster night, you never need a babysitter. The parking is always free. The atmosphere is as casual as the dress code, and you always get the best seat in the house. So remember, when it comes to a great night out, just stay in. Stream your movies from the world's number one, chart buster, because there's no place like home. Brilliant, brilliant. Other words, fantastic. Really good. I think the pace is coming there. The only thing I would say is I think it was just after a great night out. There was you were reading the dash and gave it a real long pause. But you know, that's <laughs> yes. something you could obviously, if you were recording from home, you just tighten up in the edit. No, sure. But other words, great. Uh, really, really good. I mean, thank you, you know, it, very much for in front of the us, pointers. But, um, I appreciate it. Yeah, no, definitely heading in the right direction. Go away and practice it again, David. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not coming back on, am I? Oh my! <laughs> no, no. you'll be pleased to know. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank hey, you. thanks for coming on, David. Really appreciate thanks it. Thanks a lot. Uh, I, I can agree with Gary there. I, I think you know, just over a couple of reads there, um, some great improvements there. So, really hope that uh, that helped. And uh, so, I'm going to change. Uh, and let's see, we have our next guest there. So we are going to have multiple guests today. And uh, the next one is Mason. Mason, I hope you're ready. Um, and uh, again, thank you for being brave as well. Put your hand up for this. So uh, let's uh, welcome Mason Carver here. Awesome. Mason, how are you doing today? I'm good, thanks. Yourself? Not too bad at all. All right. As, uh, as you've seen here today and been introduced today, um, here's Gary. And uh, I'll let you guys go through the next script there, off so. Lovely. Hello, Mason. Good to see you. Hi. Your avatar looks very accurately like you. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, it's funny that I could be a, fact, I just, I'm had to take a, a double take there to make sure that really is you and not your avatar. <laughs> <laughs> Animated yeah. version. Um, so, Mason, just um, give us a little bit of detail about yourself. You know, where, what's your journey um, been so far in terms of voiceovers? Long time actor. Um, stage, screen, television, uh, not what you would call hugely successful, but enough to get by. Um, then I wrote a book a couple of years ago and I did the audio book for it because I thought, oh, why right. should I pay okay. someone? I'm perfectly, um, capable. And that's when I started thinking, hmm, I could do this more often. Um, so here we are. And of course... As Dave said, COVID hit and everybody was running out to buy microphones. Um, so I'm part of that crowd. So did you buy your mic once COVID hit or did were you no, already no. here? No, uh, no. I bought this microphone uh, to do the audio book. This is oh, a, for your audio book. a yes. blue yes. Um, X, Yeti X. Um, and I told myself when I book a job that pays me enough, I will upgrade to a roadie or something nice. Okay, so um, so you've done your own book. Presumably you you were pleased with your own performance. Did you, uh, or, um, well, or were you overly course, critical? I'm always pleased with my own performance. It's, uh, but the, the audio book has gotten some nice reviews. So I'll oh, take that's that cool. as a yes. Great stuff. Uh, well, that's very good. Um, I mean, you come from an acting background. I always say yes. you don't have to be an actor to be a voiceover artist. I'm not. Um, uh, people come from all sorts of backgrounds. 
I think you do have a bit of an advantage being an actor. I think you're able to, and as we're talking about the, the whole webinar is about vocalizing, vocalizing the script. Um, and I think you do have an advantage as an actor because that's what you're, you've been doing all your life, all your career, isn't it? You've right. been getting Trying the characters, catch someone and bringing the characters story. to life. Um, so uh, I, I suppose the difference is that in voiceovers, you're not well, mainstream voiceovers anyway. I'm not talking about pure voice acting where you may be doing a video game or animation or, or whatever, you, and you're a character. But where you are yourself, um, did you find that difficult, Mason, going I from? I have been told in uh, some of the classes I've taken that I have a tendency to make the read too interesting and so they start paying attention to how i'm saying it rather yes, than what right, i'm saying right so i have to pull back some so it's almost too good the the or too uh, too much voice you know, in a way it's it's distracting from the message i guess it, it it's interesting isn't it um and when i've trained actor you know coached actors before uh, on more than one occasion Actors have said, you know, presented them with a script, even something quite prosaic like a corporate or whatever, and they've said, uh, "Well, what character do you want me to play?" And I've said, "Well, just be yourself." And you know, and a couple of people have said to me, <laughs> a couple of former actors have said, "But I don't want to I be don't know myself how to do that. because that's why I became an actor, <laughs> so I wasn't <laughs> myself." <laughs> so suddenly, you can feel quite, you can feel quite exposed, I guess, because that's kind yeah. of. It's you now. It's not a character. It's you. It's Mason Carver, the real, the real deal. Um, well, let's have a look at this soft sell. Um, complete, I suppose, opposite end of the spectrum to the hard sell. So this is warm and cuddly and friendly and smother your skin with smooth, silky softness. Our new lotion with lavender helps keep your skin naturally glowing and feeling as soft as a baby's. When used on wet skin, it provides a protective layer that helps lock in moisture, leaving your skin feeling irresistibly baby soft. Go on, give your skin a real baby soft treat. Um, so I think with this, I, I think actually with this one, Mason, you can, you probably can turn up the drama a little bit, the acting. I think it is, it's not a, you know, you're not doing an e learning Charm. script or anything like that, um, or it's not selling a, a piece of software or, or something or a bit of tech um so it, it is quite a rich warm inviting type of read really so just give me a read through see how you get on i'll turn on my berry white <laughs> okay all right smother your skin with smooth silky softness our new lotion with lavender helps keep your skin naturally glowing and feeling as soft as a baby's when used on wet skin it provides a protective layer that helps lock in moisture, leaving your skin feeling irresistibly baby soft. Go on, give your skin a real baby soft treat. Oh, lovely. That was, that was really, really nice, actually. I want to go out and give my skin a real baby soft treat with that, <laughs> that, that lotion. <laughs> very, very nice. Um, and I think your pace was good too. I mean, that that seemed to work well on on this. Um, I mean, looking at the keywords, I don't know what we've got there. I mean, you you made a nice. You picked up on the little um, pause that I did. Um, one one of the elements I didn't sort of touch on uh, when we did the sort of slide presentation at the beginning of the session was pausing, mm. um, and if used judiciously then it can be really effective. Leaving your skin feeling, and you did a lovely, leaving your skin feeling irresistibly baby soft. Or did you go irresistibly baby soft? I think you might've put it there, actually, the pause. Um, and, and it works well. So, it, but again, you know, you've got, you've got to use a pause sparingly. You can't right. pepper a script with pauses, you know, every four or five words, I'll put a pause in because it'll make it sound a bit better because it will completely lose its its effectiveness. Um, I also ran out of breath a bit in the middle there. Oh, did which, you? I didn't, I didn't You know, the first time it. through, it's like you want to go, <gasps> but. Yeah, I mean, if you're recording from home, obviously you can, I mean, you've edited an audio book, so you, you know that you can just chop um, uh, chop those, those, those breaths out. <laughs> In, while we're on the subject, actually, of editing breaths out, um, did you find with your book 
but you wanted to leave the breaths in rather than taking them out? Um, I, well, you know, you're recording seven hours of your own voice, reading stuff. Uh, I got to the point where I was able to just identify those weird mouth sounds, you know, the little lip smacks and and breaths and whatnot um, by sight in the waveform. So um, if, it, if it looked like an aggressive waveform, I would listen to it and then cut it out or not. And if it, right. if it was, you know, a teeny tiny one, I would let it go. Yeah, I mean, the reason I, I say is because uh, we're all... You People know, have to think you breathe at some point. Yeah, and I think you're absolutely right. I think with any long-form reading, and particularly, uh, you know, straight narration, particularly audiobooks that goes on for a long, long time, you were saying it was seven hours. Was that was that the completed length of the book? Or? That was complete, seven hours. Yeah. I mean, that's going to take you a good 35 hours you've probably spent on it to, yes. to, to do the whole thing. I would say allow a ratio of about five to one. So for every hour of finished audio, you, you can easily allow five hours of hard work, recording and editing and corrections and so on. Um, I think it's, it's fair to say that on long form reading, you probably want to do what you did, which was leaving the breaths in or not the overt breaths that, that leap out at you, but but you can even obviously reduce reduce the volume of them. But you're quite right. It's got to sound natural. I and tend to leave in the, you know, the little sips of breath and take out the ones that seem a little more uh, yeah, coming I, up I for think, air. Yes, I think you have to play it by ear. I think yeah. that's, the, that's the main thing. You can't just uh, say, right, I'm going to leave all breaths in or take them all out or take every eighth breath out or whatever. You can't apply any kind of metric like that. But what you can do is listen. And if it feels that that breath was fine, great. You know, it sounds really good. Um, if it is too prominent and it just feels distracting when you listen, then it might be a good idea to kind of nip that one out. And, That's a good rule. Uh, take that one away. But, but it's very much listening to it and feeling it, you know, feeling it yourself, feeling the pace. A breath sometimes works wonders. Now on commercials, everything gets taken out. Uh, lip smacks and, and so, of course, but, but breaths as well, because clients are paying often by the second to get their right. stuff aired on TV or radio or YouTube or whatever. And, you know, if you add up all the breaths that you, you took in a 30 second piece, they might go, I could have got an extra eight words in, you know, and I'm paying for him to I'll breathe. Have to keep That's that outrageous. I'm cutting down so, auditions for work commercial copy yeah well you'll find that that that's you know living out all of those all of those and and often particularly you know like in in the hard cell and medium cells it goes bang 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 there's hardly a, a gap to put a piece of paper in you know you can't you can't sense that this one's a little different because of course you're uh, it, it's warmer and softer it's it's kind of it's it's more inviting, so it doesn't have that that pace to it. But you would probably still, if you you know doing it for Pick real, it up a little. definitely edit out. Let's do one more, just because it was so good anyway, Mason. Just just give me a final right. one. If as you long as you can't hear my dog farting in the corner, <laughs> I'm not even barking, but farting. No, no, he's sound asleep. He's he's twelve. He 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 pretty much eats and farts and sleeps. That's probably. okay. <laughs> comes to us all smother your skin with smooth silky softness mason Are mason, you... mason uh, mm -hmm. just just i think you just went into that a bit too quick just you went smother your skin with just slow it down a bit really okay. enjoy the words smother your skin with smooth yeah, silky days. softness right. enjoy the alliteration smother your skin with smooth silky softness our new lotion with lavender helps keep your skin naturally glowing and feeling as soft as a baby's. When used on wet skin, it provides a protective layer that helps lock in moisture, leaving your skin feeling irresistibly baby soft. Go on, give your skin a real baby soft treat. I think that was better than your first one. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, really, really good. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Very nice. Well done. Good luck with your career. <laughs> Thanks. No, that, that was really, really good, uh, Mason. There, even straight out of the gate, that was that was really good. So, thanks Thank for uh, coming on. I oh, appreciate absolutely. the bravery. <laughs> A pleasure. Awesome, Mason. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mason. Thank you. Cheers. All right, and so we do have uh, one more guest here today.
Hi. Hey, Sarah, how's it going? How are you guys? <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. You didn't know you were going Thank to be you. doing this today. I no, no. straight in. <laughs> yes. Um, can you guys way. see me? <laughs> we, we can. We can, we can see, see you. you. Can oh, you. okay. I can't see my. I look like crap, and I'm doing this off my iPad. I'm so sorry, but I'm very excited because I'm actually a professional vocalist, and I started. Um, I kind of went on on a bit of a tangent because my boyfriend was like, "Why don't you try voiceover?" And I, I um, did my whole studio. I went and got um, a whole bunch of equipment, but I I don't have any experience. I've done like 150 auditions and have not been hired for any gigs. So I'm like, oh, I think I'm doing this all wrong. I'm just yeah. So I'm I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Gary, I'll <laughs> let you take over here. Okay, well, good, good to see you. Good to hear you, Sandra. Um, Thank you. I mean, just to um, address the lack of uh, uh, of work so far. I mean, keep keep going, Andy. Oh. You know, don't don't give up. Um, it's just if you if you put your if you put yourself in the clients, all 150 clients that you've auditioned for, um, they're just looking for the right fit in terms of voice. That's what they're looking for. So right. You may, it may be that on some of those auditions you've done, that some of them, you've, you've been the best voice they've ever heard. They might go, wow, that Sandra's fantastic. But her voice just isn't quite right for this, mm. for this job. It's nothing personal. Of course, it is personal to you because <laughs> you're thinking, yeah, oh, it wants me. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, but try not to take it. It's easy, easy to say it. But I think always bear in mind, you know, it's nothing personal. It's just that you weren't the right fit for the job. And as long as your recording gear is okay, as long as your performance is compelling, you know, you're doing compelling auditions each time, you're also working on, on going for stuff that is targeted. You know, if you think, well, actually, I can't really, I'd struggle with that. If you're struggling with the audition, it's a good sign that you wouldn't be able to do the job. So make sure you right. click with the words as well. Um, Okay. Well, the best advice I can I can say is keep going. You know, some people take a lot of people doing a thousand auditions before they get that that one gig. Um, oh, jeez. <laughs> which which I know it's probably extreme, really. But you know, just just keep keep on at it, and you'll you'll be getting better. That's the other thing. Every audition is like being coached, isn't it? It's it's like doing some rehearsal. You know, doing the best like, practice you can get. Best, right. It is best practice because it's the real world. It's not like your coach or whatever saying, oh, here's some scripts to do. You know, it's it's kind of the, the real world with real clients. So keep on at it. Anyway. Okay. Thank you. You're lucky you've got the children's story. So oh, I was we'll, like, have a bit oh. of, we'll have a bit of fun with this. Um, now okay. you can, you've got a couple of options. You can, you can put on a, uh, a couple of voices here for the, uh, for the characters. There's Percy the Pigeon and Brittany the Burmese. Um, I hope you like cats and birds. Um, <laughs> but or or you can just do it as if uh, as if you were um, just hinting that somebody else is speaking. So that's sometimes an easier way to do it. Okay. Percy the pigeon was amazed. How could a cat be so friendly? You're the first cat I've met who hasn't tried to eat me," said Percy. "Well, to be honest," replied Brittany the Burmese, "I'm not that fond of pigeons." I prefer doves, jackdaws, and sparrows myself. With that, she turned and scampered away, tail high in the air. Percy was flabbergasted. I feel so lucky to be alive, he said. I think I might treat myself to a cappuccino. <laughs> so the whole thing with this is um, it's good fun. You know, have, enjoy it, really. So okay. you go for it. Okay. Percy the pigeon was amazed. How could a cat be so friendly? You're the first cat I've met who hasn't tried to eat me, said Percy. Well, to be honest, replied Brittany the Burmese, I'm not that fond of pigeons. I prefer doves, jackdaws and sparrows myself. With that, she turned and scampered away, tail high in the air. Percy was flabbergasted. I feel so lucky to be alive, he said. I think I might treat myself to a cappuccino. <laughs> Very nice. And, and you haven't seen these words before. You haven't seen these words before, have you? No? 
No, 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 no. So that was a brilliant <laughs> sight read. I mean, if you can, if you can sight read a script, you're halfway there. I mean, I, I, I know these words, so it's unfair. You know, I'm cheating to a large extent, sounding better than oh. I really have. Um, Sorry about the trouble. You haven't seen the script, but that was great. I, I think it's just, I think in this case, it's getting used to the words. Why don't we try one now? I'm putting mm -hmm. you on the spot, but why don't we try one with different character voices? Okay. okay. Um, Percy, the, so the first bit is kind of the narrator, I guess. Percy the Pigeon was amazed. That's just as you. How could a cat be so friendly? Still you. But then, mm -hmm. but a dialogue, whatever you want to do for that. Yeah, the first cat I've met who hasn't tried to meet me, <laughs> said Percy. Oh. Well, to be honest, replied Brittany, you know, whatever you want to do on that. So, um, Okay, so we've so got a couple of voices. We've got three voices. We've got you, narrator, and we've got uh, Percy, Percy voice, and we've got a Brittany the Burmese voice as well. Okay. Uh, Percy is the, the – I'm a little bit confused, so there's three? Yeah, you, just you as narrator. So that first bit – Right, uh, right. It, it actually starts with speech marks, but I think that's incorrect. I think it's just straight narration, that first bit. Let me run here. We'll, do it, we'll do it line computer. by line so we can break it down. We can really drill, in, drill down into the script. Okay. Percy the pigeon was amazed. How could a cat be so friendly? That would be me, the narrator. That's correct, yes. Right. And then here's your first bit of dialogue from Percy. You're the first cat I've met who hasn't tried to eat me, said Percy. Oh, bit, and then you've got to come back. Sandra, <laughs> yeah, a bit more of a go, go to an extreme because it's a children's story so you can play around with the voice. You're the first cat I've met who hasn't tried to eat me, said Percy. Mm. Uh, Not bad. It started off very well, and then you kind of <laughs> lost the, the accent. Uh, uh, let's, go on to, let's move on to Brittany. Well, to be honest, replied Brittany the Burmese. And more of a, um, what, what were you doing there? What, what kind of accent was that? I mean, you well, very quickly, but. Uh, I just went high pitched. Okay, go even higher. Well, to be honest, replied Brittany, the Burmese. So, I'm not that well, fond of pigeons. Honest. So then, just take a pause after you said honest. Well, to be honest, replied Brittany, the Burmese. Well, to be honest, replied Brittany, the Burmese. I'm not that fond of pigeons. I prefer doves, jackdaws, and sparrows myself. With that, she well, with that she turned and scampered away, tail high in the air. Percy was flabbergasted. Percy is the pigeon. Is that the high pitched one? I'm I'm a bit confused. Uh, what do we do? I can't remember. Percy, <laughs> I you don't remember your characters. Yeah, this is Percy was the low pitched. Oh, Percy. Okay, so I feel so lucky to be alive. He said, "I, <laughs> geez, this is a hard one. one. Give me that line again. I feel so lucky. It didn't sound like you were very lucky to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel so Lucky to be alive. I feel so lucky, uh, but he's, he, it's a lower yeah, voice. I feel so it. lucky to be alive, he said. I think I might treat myself to a cappuccino. Oh, this is just <laughs> awful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we man. have to put you on the spot. It's probably the toughest one because, of course, it's got the characters in it. So yes. sometimes people think, oh, children's story, kids' story is really easy. Actually, sometimes no. they're the most difficult. Um and you've got a you've got a really picky audience as well, you know. And yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm really sorry. Absolutely everything. I, I remember really once crap. Um, reading a story to my children. It was the Sorcerer's Apprentice, really long book. But when my children were younger, and my son turned around and said, "That's not very good." I thought you were supposed to be a voiceover person. <laughs> so yes, you know, uh, I, I bear that in mind when you come to do that. Um, I don't know whether we've got time for another. I was about to say. Just because she got the hardest script there. <laughs> we, yep. If she's uh, feeling up for it, we can give her a crack at uh, the IVR. Okay, yeah, go straight for it. So IVR, interactive voice response. Do you know that, Sandra? So basically on-hold phone messages. Okay, okay. So lots of energy, lots of friendliness. Take your time with it. Okay. Thank you for calling TRK Services. Please just listen carefully. Sandra, just going to interrupt yeah. you. So when you get letters like TRK or CEO, for example, from the yeah. boss of a company, you don't, even though it's capitalized or it might have full stops and so on, just get it to flow a bit more. So thank you for calling TRK Services. Okay. Thank you for calling TRK Services. Please listen carefully to access your account. Using the keypad on your phone, please enter your account number and then press hash. Please enter your date of birth. 
For example, the 25th of April, 1980 is 250480. Please enter the second digit of your security number. Now enter the fourth digit of your security number. Please enter the first digit of your, ah, this is, I'm sorry, this is all wrong. No, Please it's, it's enter. okay, it's good, it's good. <laughs> go to, go to Please, the end and then we'll just uh, have another go at it. Please enter the first digit of your security number. Now press star. Alternatively, if you would like to speak to one of our operators, please hold. That was good. That was good. And keep the smile going. Make it nice and friendly. So it's, thank you for calling TRK Services. Please listen carefully to access your account and try and make it conversational if you can, nice and chatty. Using the keypad on your phone, please enter your account number and then press hash. Please enter your date of birth, for example, blah, blah, blah. blah. So keep it like that if you can. And, and they're separate sentences, so you, you can afford to take a good a good pause after each one, just to break it down a bit. Okay, have another go. Okay. Thank you for calling TRK Services. Please listen carefully to access your account. Using the keypad on your phone, please enter your account number and then press hash. Please enter your date of birth. For example, the 25th of April, 1980 is 250480. Please enter the second digit of your security number. Now enter the fourth digit of your security number. Please enter the first digit of your security number. Now press star. Alternatively, if you would like to speak to one of our operators, please hold. Very good. And I noticed you were doing something that I didn't even ask you to do it, but you were doing it anyway. You were smiling. And a smile is fantastic. Probably, And you're a singer. Is that right? You're a singer yes. by trade? Yes. And you know that if you want to warm up a song, you get that that grin going, don't you? That cheesy grin. Right. Even though it might look terrible. And it, you know, if you were doing it in real life, people would think, what's the matter with her? <laughs> Just grinning at me like that. But certainly if you if you can smile while you're doing a script, um, it'll really warm up the whole thing. Obviously, if it's about death, doom, and destruction, you don't want to be adding a smile to it. No. But um, you know, something like that, which is, you know dollars ditch water the script isn't it you know it's just a series of commands anything you can do to make it sound interesting because especially in ivr you pick up the phone people don't want to hear an automated message they want to talk to a human don't they so the more yeah. human you are the better and that's often what clients are looking for they're looking for someone who's really human really nice not over the top but just friendly right. um you know someone you might have a cappuccino with like a like your pigeon so um you know, and that's <laughs> right but you, you were great fantastic really good i mean we put thanks you on so speed. much you know you're coming on and you did two two different scripts so very well done. <laughs> thank you really Thursday. appreciate it hey sandra really uh commend you there i know it was at least david and mason have a little bit of a heads up there <laughs> so yeah, yeah. A moment and uh, uh definitely i hope everyone's at home we'll give sandra a little round of applause there and uh, oh thank you <laughs> very good great job sandra thank you um we might have to be a little bit shorter with our q a session today um but i'll try to get to some questions here now for anybody that is wondering um because i know there are some questions out there uh if you're looking for any questions that we don't get to uh david or uh, sorry gary would it be all right if they reached out to you um if for any questions that we yes don't yes please do yeah if you can uh you can go on to my website vomasterclass.com vomasterclass.com uh there's a form you can fill in there fire that off sign up to my newsletter there Once we go month, awesome a little, so little tip, master... a bit of advice every month and i'll uh, you know if you want to ask me a question of course you can yes awesome and you said it was vomaster.com right yeah vomasterclass.com oh, yeah masterclass perfect that's v right masterclass.com feel yep. free to send them an email um i will try to get to a couple questions here um so anybody have any questions they can go ahead and pop it in the q a bar and uh and i'll try to get to uh as many as we can there but uh i might have to limit it because we are over time right now all right let's see all right we've got one here um as an actor i sometimes play the script a bit too much versus being actually naturalistic or conversational what would you um what would be the main tip that uh you might be able to give to somebody um you know that might be in that shoes much like sounded like mason um yeah absolutely it, it was his uh, one of his issues wasn't it as well um i mean i think 
bear in mind you're not acting it. You're not you're not on stage. You're not on TV or in the movies. Uh, it's very much you. It's about you talking to your listener. So you could even do a little uh, a little thing when you're doing a voiceover to imagine a friend, and you could even say that friend's name. So you could say, "Hello, Kyle. I'm here, and I'm going to tell you about." TRK services and thank you for calling. You could even do a, a COD one say, thank you for calling Kyle. TRK, obviously you'd have to cut the Kyle out, but you can just <laughs> personalize it like that in whatever way you want to, but make it uh, so you're talking to that one person, you're not acting it, it's genuine, it, it really is from you. It's about you and not your character. I think that's a, a great exercise that uh, I hear from various coaches um, and much, much like you're saying there, you know, try to take it and, and put that personal touch on it and try to put yourself in that conversation with, like you said, somebody, you know, personally. Um, yeah, absolutely. Do like a little mock conversation with yourself. Yeah, a bit beforehand. Yeah. Yes. And, 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 and maybe play it back. Just have a listen. And does it sound genuine? You know, if your friend was to listen to it, would they think she's acting that or he's acting that or, or does it sound like you're you really are talking to your friend, you know, yep. uh, if you are, then, then you, you, you're nearly there with that. So that awesome. would be the best advice, I think. Awesome. And then uh, I, I had a question there. Um, Gary, do you do coaching over Zoom? So that, sorry, I lost that one. Say that again, Kyle. They're wondering if uh, you do coaching over Zoom, if somebody. Uh, I do do Zoom sessions. Like yes, I do. Wondering. Yeah, I do a 40, 45 minute Zoom session. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, this is one that uh, I think we can uh, likely both answer there. How long um, should I spend on an audition? audition? And should I go with an initial read or uh, should I take a lot of time to massage and work through it? It I'll would go ahead it, with your tips and I'll, I'll kind of speak my uh, voices side there, at least on a, a portion of it in regards to how much spent on an audition. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it really does depend on on the piece, doesn't it? And if there's some difficult words in there, it may take you a few reads to get those those right, or the phrasing is quite awkward or alien to you. It, might, it may take you a while to, to get used to it. Um, but sometimes you can do half a dozen auditions, you can do half a dozen recordings, and actually number one was the best. And don't forget, there's a law of diminishing returns. So often the more you do, it gets better and better and better. Some point you'll peak, it'll be your best one, and it'll start getting worse and worse and worse. So it really does depend. Get into, I mean, the more you do, the better, and you'll, you'll know yourself and you'll see a script and think that's too difficult um i'm gonna to have to do you know lots and lots of reads of it well you might just do one and that first one will be fresh it will have all the creativity you need it will sound you know very realistic whereas the others might be a bit more read and a bit more performed so just play it by ear really i i think you're kind of spot on there uh i think it's it's worth mentioning yeah the the creative side of things where a lot of magic can be, you know, within the, the first read or, or second read there, you're, you're striving creatively. Um, whereas the more you rehearse something, the more it starts to sound rehearsed sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Very um, true. Yeah. I, I, I definitely agree with what uh, Gary said there in regards to how long you should spend on an audition. Um, uh, uh, the first thing I would say is make sure the, the audition's quality. Don't, don't try to speed up your uh, process there and sacrifice quality. Um, but I will say once you get to a point of you're putting in very quality auditions and you have a set process that you can follow, um, start uh, streamlining that. Uh, the goal would be, you know, getting it down to, you know, under 10 minutes, um, you know, and ideally uh, close to five minutes per audition, um, as that'll really, really help your workflow in regards to being able to, to put your name in the ring for as many jobs as possible. Um, it'll benefit you greatly in the long run, but don't do that at the sacrifice of the quality. So uh, that's my two cents there. Do you agree? Yeah, Gary? Wise words. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's very good. You, you don't want to keep uh, flogging a dead horse, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, you need to get in there and get out uh, as quickly as possible, but it's still going to be a great audition. You know, uh, maybe have a few reads beforehand before you actually press record. You know, just get used to those words, take them on board. 
remember we were talking about vocalizing scripts, make sure it's believable. Have you got the pace right? Is the tone, the whole tone of the thing right? You know, any any difficult words or phrases you need to to just sort out um, and then press record and see what happens and, and just go into record and, and do it two or three times, see how many you get and then, then listen to your best one and, and choose that. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, that is wrapping us up there. I know Daniel asked uh, how to contact Gary for Zoom coaching. Um, Gary, you said it was vomasterclass.com. Yeah, that's my website. And there's um, a form on there that you can fill in and then um, it, it'll come through to me. So uh, and look forward to hearing from you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you to our guests there, Sandra, David and Mason. And to everybody else that uh, set aside an hour of their time to join us here today, it is greatly appreciated. I hope uh, you learned something today that you can move forward with in your career. And uh, Gary, thank you so much for setting aside the time to chat with us today. I, we greatly appreciate it and uh, and hope we have the chance to do it again in the future. Yeah, thanks thanks very much, Kyle. It's been great. I've really enjoyed it. Some very talented people out there. Putting them on the spot is not easy. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> doing it in front of us and, and, and an audience as well it is tough, really. It's far easier to do it in your booth when you know no one's watching, only yourself. So. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's been good fun. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me. Awesome, guys. Well, that, that brings us to uh, wrap up this session. Uh, until next month, I hope you guys all have an amazing time. Happy auditioning and wish you the best of luck. Bye.